Little did I know when I came to New York City to be a math teacher 10 years ago, my students and I would be on the cover of the Wall Street Journal besieged by animal rights activists on the cover of the Wall Street Journal. I blame my father. <laughs> Thinking back, it all started with the talk radio call-in show about the fate of the snowy owl of northern Ontario. My father, an Egyptian chemical engineer, put a call-in on his drive back from work. This is CFRB in Toronto. We have Ralph driving on the 401. Ralph, what's your take on the fate of the snowy owl of northern Ontario? Uh, why worry so much about the snowy owl? It's not a person, it's just an animal bird. Uh, yeah, well, we know it's a bird, uh, Ralph, thank you for that. Um, but you know, animals are important to our ecosystem. And you know, we all have favorite animals. My favorite animal is the elephant. Ah, elephants. What has an elephant done for you recently? <laughs> you don't see cats working in factories, huh? Look, like a dutiful son, I argued with my father at the time on behalf of these lovely creatures. And you, you know what? You know what, Dad? We had two cats at the time. <laughs> Good point, though. Lazy. What was my father's point, really? He was saying that there are humans all over the world without access to fresh water or food or good education, and we need to address that first, and everything else will fall into place. <clears throat> Incidentally, both my parents' families more of a clipped. Uh, left Egypt in the 1960s for being minorities. They left everything behind. They left with nothing but their brains. Maybe that's why my father always said to us, the only thing that can't be taken from you is your education. Anyway, here I am, a Canadian in New York City, teaching math to a bunch of 12 and 13 year olds. <laughs> Okay, so one thing I pick up quickly in my new hometown is that teaching math straight out of the textbook sucks the life out of my students and me quickly. So I try to find a wacky experiential idea to wrap my curriculum around and then drag the math out of it kicking and screaming. That's my dad. Those are my students. <laughs> so I was sitting there, it was lunchtime a few years ago, I was sort of procrastinating. I was going to grade some student homework, but then I don't want to do that, just like the kids don't want to do their homework. So I started glancing around my room, and I saw my fish tank over there. I thought, ha, fish, pretty, <laughs> lunchtime, <laughs> yummy, fish, food, lunch, fish, food, lunch, lunchtime, fish, food, food. It appears on our plates every day and most of us have no idea how it got there. Hmm, is there a way I can connect my ethical musings about food to some wacky mathematical experience? Hmm, around the same time, as if I had found favor in the eyes of the god Poseidon himself, a parent of one of my students came up to me, started talking to me about aquaponics. aqua what -ix? Aquaponics. It's the art of growing vegetables using nothing but water and fish wastes. No soil, no pesticides, that would require, I don't know, a lot of mess and, and horribly, hor horrible, horrible floods in the, in the students', in the students lounges and in the offices. And I thought, perfect. Math. <laughs> math. Where's the math? I'm a math teacher, right? I forgot. So maybe that would require kids, oh, I don't know, measuring volumes of grow beds and designing the tanks and then finding how much how much weight the shelves can hold, yes, yes. Or maybe estimating, estimating the evaporation rates of water, or maybe even the growth rates of the fish over time. In a word, mathiness. <laughs> I was even able to procure some funding to travel abroad to research the idea. In the summer of 2014, I surprised my wife with a trip to Europe. <laughs> she was so excited until I told her that we would be volunteering for hours planting vegetables, gutting trout, knee-deep in fish poop. <laughs> when we returned to North America, and I was set free from sleeping on the couch, I scrounged to find some more funding to build this eco-tech aqua system in our school. And they kept throwing money at us. I mean, organizations kept finding ways to give us money. It was fantastic. We even had somebody donate 
30 little baby tilapia fish. They were this big, and they were swimming around, and they would say hello to us, and they would nibble on the food. We had to fry them up by June, so they needed to grow a foot and a half long and a mass of three pounds. Now, were we going to actually euthanize and eat these fish over time? Well, we didn't really know. Look, the class engaged in a heated debate for months at a time. Heated debate, fish, should we eat them? The class was split, although we had some swing states. <laughs> Look, we were creating these functions, these, these mathy functions. Over time, we had, we had six to eight months to get these fish to plate size. I mean, October plus eight is May. Okay, so we would be home free, no problem. Except it didn't work out that way. We had to keep readjusting our functions. Mathiness. Were we going to euthanize and eat these fish? What, what, I was gonna have a classroom full of kids, just a fish at each place, and the fish would be flopping around where the kids would be beating them to death. <laughs> and then what if, what if the fish revolted? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a, uh, I would, yeah, that would have been fun, that would have been fun. <laughs> now look, how the Wall Street Journal caught wind of this, I'll never know. But not far behind was PETA, the ethical treatment <clears throat> of animals. But the kids debated with the PETA educators over Skype. They used their mathematical and ethical reasoning to talk with them. But were we going to euthanize and eat these fish? Well. I'll let Lene and Elijah explain what happened next. The if idea of euthanizing the tilapia or to keep them alive was a hot button issue amongst my peers and me. We had Students that were against killing the tilapia brought up the argument that the fish are pets. They so even have worked up a special bond with the fish to eat the main menu right? they no, Whether the fish one one lived or died, died look, this is not a classroom. We're just going one at a time. Yo, whoa, 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 whoa. Nice shooting text. Thank you very much. Lene, have a seat. Elijah, thank you. Please, one at a time. It's not a classroom. If something doesn't serve a purpose, you should get rid of it. When we took on the responsibility of raising the tilapia, we had the intention of eating them. We provided them with food, a healthy environment, and a community where they could interact with each other and even mate. In turn, their waste helped fertilize our kale, romaine lettuce, and bok choy. But at what cost? It took tons of money to build and maintain the aquaponic system. The tilapia also wasted tons of class time or we had to replace water in their tank when the toxic levels got out of hand. This happened because the ratio of plants to fish was too low. The vegetables could not absorb the fish waste quickly enough to return the water toxic-free into the tank. People order animals to eat in restaurants every day. So what is the difference between that and raising the animals ourselves? Why not let them provide us with fish tacos? <laughs> The idea of euthanizing our pet tilapia or to keep them alive was a hot button issue amongst my peers and me. Students that were against killing the tilapia brought up the argument that the fish were our pets. They seemed to have worked up a special bond with the fish and even named them. Frank, Pablo, Sean Quasia. <laughs> they challenged that you wouldn't eat your pet cat or dog, would you? So why eat the fish? They also claimed that fish could feel pain like humans could. Others countered this idea by explaining that fish couldn't be compared to other pets like cats or dogs, much less humans. The class was at a stalemate. Some kids were very excited about the idea of euthanizing the fish for food, but I felt it was strange that they were so passionate about killing them. Whether the fish lived or died was not too important to me personally, in fact, we could have dissected the fish and identified their organs in the name of science. Let me clarify. The fish did not grow at a fast rate, so they were not large enough to eat. But now they're all grown up, and so it's taco time. <laughs> or is it? So the kids have been dealing with ethical ambiguity using mathematics as their evidence, so we still need to decide what to do. 
Um, do we save the fishy friends? <laughs> or is it brunch? Okay, so that's 30 fish, six, uh, two fillets per fish, that's 60, 60, okay, mathiness, okay, recipes, recipes, kitchen, heat ovens, ovens, yes, burning students, students burning, no, no burn students, no burn, no, no, that's fine, unless they don't do their homework, then burn students, that's fine. Look, my father's words still echo in my brain to this day. The one thing that can't be taken from you is your education, and even more so if it's connected in your values, and visceral memories of fish poop. Thank you. <laughs>